Hey, it's Professor Gould. In this section, we're going to start talking about tissues and um, how the body is organized. It's kind of a big subject, so we're going to just start pretty simple. So first, we're going to understand what tissues are and how we distinguish them. We're going to understand and recognize common tissue types and the functions they have and why we see some in one area and not another. We're going to understand the structure and function of the integumentary system, which is really just a fancy word for your skin. And then we're going to understand parts of the hair and nails. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but this tissue one is really very large. There's a lot there. So let's get into it. All right. So what are tissues? Tissues are groups of similar cells and the extracellular products that those cells make and surround the cells. And each group of tissues is made up of a set of cells that carry out a function together. Um, tissues provide protection for other tissues or for organs. Uh, they facilitate body movement. There's bone cells make up a type of tissue called bone, um, most of which is actually an extracellular matrix, which was, is this outside stuff that cells make and secrete outside of themselves. And the study of tissues is called histology. So that's your fancy word for the day, histology, the study of tissues. All right, there are four primary types of tissues uh, in the body. We're going to very quickly go over these. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time with connective and epithelial uh, tissues, and then later we're going to go into more detail on muscle and nervous. I'm going to introduce them today, but we'll talk in much more detail about them later. All right, connective tissues. Connective tissues do exactly what it sounds like they do. They connect things, okay? They're, they're tissues that, that connect one thing to another, that support structures in the body, that protect structures in the body, that bind organs in place. Um, bones are connective tissues, tendons and ligaments, body fat. Blood is a connective tissue, which um, kind of connects all of your tissues by providing nutrients to all of your tissues. Well, kind of cool. Okay. Um, and connective tissues all contain specific types of cells, and we're going to see different types of cells in different types of connective tissues. And then they all have protein fibers, different amounts of protein fibers, depending on the different types. And something that we call ground substance, which is a non-living material, usually protein and carbohydrates, that surrounds the cells. Now, we can distinguish different types of tissues, connective tissues, by how many protein fibers, what type of protein fibers, and how much ground substance. Now, protein fibers and ground substance that are outside of the cells are made by the cells, but because they're called they're outside the cells, they're called extracellular. And because they're kind of connected to each other, we call them a matrix. So it's an extracellular matrix. So extra means outside. Um, each type of connect connective tissue has a specific function and because form and function go together, they're going to have a different form based on that function. All right, so we're gonna start off. We have um, three types of protein fibers that we see in connective tissue. Now we're talking about outside of the cells in connective tissues. Prote Cells will also have proteins inside the cells, okay? But we're talking about the extracellular protein, the proteins outside of the cells. So we have collagen. Collagen is really strong and a little bit flexible. So it can bend. It doesn't stretch particularly much. Now, it turns out there are actually a couple different types of collagen, and some collagen stretches more than others. That's, we're, that's past what we're going into. Just know that that's a thing. We're not going to deal with that in this class, though. Um, elastic fibers provide elasticity. Um, what's important is not just that elast elastic fibers stretch. What's important is that they return to their original shape after they stretch. So they stretch, they go back to their original shape, and then they can stretch again. Okay. So um, to help you remember why this is important, think about underwear where the elastic has died. It, it can still stretch out, but if the elastic has died and it doesn't come back to its original shape anymore, then the fact that it stretches is not really very helpful. What's important is that it, it goes back. It 
holds onto your butt. Uh, and then we have this other kind of protein called reticular fibers. They're very strong. They're kind of made of collagen, but they're not the same as these collagen fibers. Um, and they form a network of spaces um, and kind of form a like almost like a honeycomb that supports other cells and tissues. And so we see this inside bone marrow. We see this inside lymph nodes where other cells need to develop and get work done. All right, so this is, if we were looking at sort of a generalized connective tissue, this is what we would see in all of it. There's lots of ground substance, and ground substance just usually just looks empty, like it's just the background stuff. Elastic fibers are really thin and look very dark when we see them on a microscope slide. Collagen fibers are lighter but thicker, much thicker than the elastic fibers. Reticular fibers look more like elastic fibers, but they're more branched. They're usually um, a lot more of them. I'll show you some different tissues and you'll see the difference in, in here. Stem cells, this is a specific kind of stem cells here and here that can reproduce and make more connective tissue. The interesting thing about these is that they can make more of any type of connective tissue. They can't make other tissues in the body, but they can make any type of connective tissue in the body. Then we have blood vessels. Now, not all connective tissues are gonna have blood vessels running through them. And in fact, many types don't have blood vessels. So we call them avascular, avascular. Um, that just means that they don't have blood vessels running through them. So tendons and ligaments, don't have blood vessels. Um, cartilage doesn't have blood vessels. And that's why those tissues take a really long time to heal. There are also immune cells, and we see these kind of immune cells. These are called um, macrophages because they do endocytosis and um, phagocytosis, meaning that they engulf other kinds of cells um, and break them down. Uh, adipocytes are fat cells which are found specifically in adipose tissue. And then fibroblasts are the kind of cells that are specific to a certain type of connective tissue. Okay. All right. So let's talk first about our loose connective tissues, um, which don't have very many cells and don't have as many protein fibers as the things we call dense connective tissues. The other ones are dense because they have densely packed connective uh, protein fibers. So the first type is called areolar connective tissue. And it's areolar um, because it's very loosely organized. This is really important for cushioning. So we see it in a lot of places where two types of things meet and um, we need some cushioning between them. Uh, there's lots of ground substance meaning it looks kind of empty. It looks very loosely packed. There are lots of fibroblasts. Remember, those are the tissues, the cells of this tissue. There are both elastic fibers and collagen fibers. So these bigger things are collagen fiber. This is like a big bunch of collagen fibers. The collagen fibers mostly aren't very um, individual or distinct in their individualism. So areolar tissue, because it has elastic and collagen, and they, neither of them is very deep, very um, tightly packed. Uh, it moves very well. It, it can stretch a little bit. It is not particularly strong. It's really easy to break. Um, and at the end of the semester, when we dissect things, you'll see how easy it is to break areolar connective tissue. It is under the epidermis of the skin. At, it makes up what we call the papillary layer of the dermis. Now the other loose connective tissue is called adipose connective tissue or just adipose. The cells in it are called adipocytes. Site means cell. Adipose means fat. So these are fat cells, literally fat cells. You must call them adipocytes because this is human biology class. Um, each of these, this is the adipocyte. Okay, it looks like an empty space. And what it is, is a cell where all of the normal cellular stuff has been pushed to the side to make room for this one giant vacuole that's just a pocket of fat, just a big old droplet of fat. So there are a few protein fibers 
to hold um, the adipose cells together. Um, there's a few blood ve vessels going through it, not a lot. Um, adipocytes don't do much. They just store energy. So they need to, you know, give up that energy when it's needed by the body. But mostly they just hang on to it. They're really good at energy storage. Uh, they do not do a lot of cellular processes. So they don't burn energy because they're not doing anything. They're just sitting there. Um, they are really good at, um, the adip adipose tissue is really good at cushioning. And so the reason you have some fat on your butt and around your hips is to help cushion those bones when you fall. So that's nice. Um, they act as insulation. They store energy. One thing um, is that the adipocytes themselves can't divide and make new adipocytes, but your stem cells can always make new adipocytes. So don't worry, your body is perfectly good at making new adipocytes if you need them. All right, now reticular connective tissue is the other sort of loose tissue. Um, some people call it dense tissue. It's a little confusing. It's very distinctive because it's got this very these very dark um, protein fibers with like pockets with other cells inside there. And so what we're looking at here is a bone marrow sample. And so each these pockets in here have the special stem cells that produce um, blood cells, different types of blood cells. Okay, so that's reticular. All right, I'm going to pause here and then we'll go into the types of dense connective tissues in the next section.